Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you days 17, 18, and 19 of the ATC a Day 2018 Challenge for June of 2018. We did this challenge last year in, in June 2017 and if you search the hashtag ATCAD2017, you will come up with all those cards that were made last year during the challenge. I don't think I've mentioned that up to this point, but there's a lot more ATCs out there to look for. Also, I have a playlist of all the ATCs um, that I've made, basically, on this channel, and you can look at that, too, if you're really interested in artist trading cards. So this particular background that I'm working on for Day 17 is one that I gel printed in the previous uh, video. So I will link that video in the iCard up in the right hand side. You can click on that if you missed that video of me gel printing a few of these artist trading card backgrounds using strumpet stencils from Etsy stencils. This one's called Winged Heart. So this one, um, it was on Father's Day and just, you know, giving some love for all the daddies and the husbands and the sons out there who are fathers. Fathers have... Um, a big influence on lives so you know we want to honor them that's a holiday in the summer of the United States so that was what this card was about when I was making it this is an anatomical heart um, you can't see the whole thing on there because it goes off the edges but I like it when images go off the edges of things I just I think it looks cool so I was Happy with the, the way this stencil showed up on my gel print. Um, I used a 3 by 5 inch gel plate to do some ATC backgrounds using some stencils. So that was fun. I always like to gel print. <laughs> it makes me happy. And I was using um, Dina Wakely paints, which I hadn't ever used on the print, the gel plate before because I didn't have them until recently. So this other stencil, um, it's got some symbols on it, also from Strumpet Stencils, and I can't write at the moment remember what the name of it is, but I decided to add a few white um, images over the top of my background with these different stencils, stencil image shapes, just because it seemed to make it a little bit more dynamic, using some uh, titanium white paint and an artist sponge. I will link all the products I used, including the sponges and all the stencils and all the paint colors and everything in the description box below. They will be links to my Amazon affiliate account, which if you use those links, it really helps out my channel because it gives me a few cents um, when you use the links. So I always like to remind you that they're there just in case you might need something that you see me use here. Of course, the strumpet stencils not getting any sense off of that one, but I like to support uh, people that I know their, you know, Etsy shops and stuff like that. So she's someone that I know who has some pretty cool and unique stencil designs. The last thing I did here was add some splatters using some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist in Precious Metal. If you only need one Glimmer Mist, that's the one. That's the color you should get because it's just so useful. It's so filled with mica and, and it's a neutral color. It's really fun to play with. So that's what I did with that. Day 17, also Father's Day in the United States. Day 18, I decided I wanted to play with some brush oak crystals. These are a pigment powder that um, I got them in a set of 12, but I think you can get them individually. The colors I used are turquoise and blue. And I spritzed my card, which is 140 pound uh, or 300 GSM watercolor paper. And I sprinkled that on there and it reminded me of rain. And recently we've had our first big monsoon rainstorm in the desert, desert where I live. It doesn't rain very often. Uh, it doesn't snow here except for maybe a little bit of sprinkling and we might get a few winter rains but uh, it's a desert it's dry here and so we have this one season in the summer called monsoon season and it's just crazy it's like it's 100 degrees outside Fahrenheit and then all of a sudden this little cloud will come in and it'll just dump water like I'm not talking sprinkling I'm talking 
crazy amounts of water just dumping on top of your head. And the other night I went to the soccer game on Friday night and um, the entire time that everyone was playing, trying to play soccer, it was pouring. It was pouring. It never stopped the entire time. So uh, the last game of the, the night got canceled because the field got so wet that, that, that the people's cleats can uh, damage the field. But I want, I, when I saw this sprinkled background, I thought it looked like green. And so I wanted to, you know, give a shout out to monsoon season. It's something that we enjoy here in the desert. Sometimes we go out and dance in it. I mean, it's warm rain and it's just so unusual that we get real excited for monsoon season. Of course, it's also humid, which we don't understand. But <laughs> besides that, it's kind of fun. So I decided to draw a person in the rain. She has an umbrella. I was using an umbrella at the soccer game because I didn't want to get wet. But everyone else got completely soaked. I mean, they were so wet. But since I was sitting on the sideline, I wasn't going to sit there and let the rain fall on my head. So I used an umbrella and stayed mostly dry. So then this this little illustration that I drew, I used a mechanical pencil with soft lead and my white eraser. And then the fabric Castell pit pins for illustration, which are in India ink that um, get, goes on there permanent. And this little piece of paper is just a scrap of printer paper. And so of course these alcohol markers, which are the Spectrum Noir ones, are gonna go right through it. Um, but it doesn't matter to me. So <laughs> I decided to color it with markers. And of course I'm using my charts the Spectrum Noir markers, the ends, end cap colors are not accurate. So you really do need to make a uh, color chart for them and use that to pick your colors. And I used two or three colors of marker for each, you know, like for the shorts, for the skin, for the, for the um, top, for the umbrella, you know, like that. And I'm trying to list the colors for you so that um, you will know what I used if you happen to be someone who likes these markers and owns a set of them. So I keep referring back to my chart to pick my next set of colors. That's how I do it, which makes it take a little bit longer because the markers aren't sitting right in front of me. They're like to the side on my table. So I have to get up, go get my next three markers, sit back down, get up, go get my next three markers, you know, like that. But they do really... Uh, make an interesting tonal effect using them because they blend so well together. They seem to soak into each other and make a really nice blend. So always fun to use them and get them out every once in a while. Of course this drawing is tiny and so I am having some difficulty just a tiny bit even with the fine end of the marker and coloring in the little teeny tiny spots. So there's a little bit of bleed over because my drawing's tiny because a <coughs> artist trading card is only two and a half by three and a half inches. So when I finish completely coloring this, I'm going to cut it out and something that I should have done. So do what I say, don't do what I do. Before I cut it out, I should have put the gesso on the back. I, I remembered after the fact that using brushes, if you put anything over the top, it doesn't matter. You put gesso over it, you put matte medium over it, you put whatever over it, it still bleeds through. And I didn't want any of that blue to bleed through onto the back of my little girl because that would completely ruin the effect. So I put some white gesso on the back of the drawing after I cut it out should have done it before I cut it out. That would have been smart. And then instead of using matte medium to attach it to the card, which would make that background wet and therefore reactiv reactivate the pigment brushes, I just uh, stuck it on with a um, Elmer's permanent craft stick, glue stick. I'm happy with these sticks. Um, in the past, I had some glue sticks that kept peeling up. And so I, when I looked for a new set of glue sticks, I found these ones that say permanent on there. And so I haven't tested it, 
but <laughs> they say they're permanent. I don't know. I haven't tested it, but I've been happy with the stickiness of them being able to stick things down on art journal pages and tags and ATCs. So, um, you know, projects that I'm not super concerned about it being sealed and on something like a, a canvas or something I use, of course, matte medium. And I, I use matte medium most of the time, but in this case, I really just did not want that pigment powder to bleed through onto my drawing. That would have ruined the whole card. <laughs> so then instead of shading with a, another color, you know, some something else, I just used a water brush and went around to kind of fill in the little blank spots just around my girl uh, to make that more integrated. And then I added some highlights with a white Posca pen. I tried to draw in some little um, raindrops, but of course the brush -o just comes right through. And instead of being white, they're light blue. You can kind of see them when the close up comes, but the effect was not what I had wanted. <laughs> And I should just remember that about brushes. <laughs> They're not a good layering product because unless you don't mind the bleed through, which, you know, there are some other products out there that are like that. Just a lot of bleed through because they're very intense pigment. So I put on some Tim Holtz chat stickers that say singing in the rain, which we do here in Arizona. <laughs> we dance in it too. We... We go a little bit crazy, just a little bit crazy. So I had a few white edges um, where I didn't cut well enough and they were bothering me. So I went back in with some black pen again and tried to fill in those black, fill those in those white areas with black so that they weren't as obvious. In the video, it's probably not something you can really see, but they're there and they were bothering me. Also, I did get a little bit of the gesso on the front because I cut it out before I um, put the gesso on like an idiot. So I had to fill in a few spots. And then I added a few highlights with my white Posca pin because I like to do that. Just makes me happy. So that is day 18 of the Artist Trading Card a Day Challenge. Little girl singing in the rain. So for day 19, what did I do? Oh yeah, I decided to use some more scraps from my bin of scraps that haven't been put away. <laughs> and I decided to just pull out some coordinating colors because that's a good way to start. Didn't really have a plan of what I was gonna make for this day. And so I found a few painty papers and this piece of canvas that has been painted as well. It's, it's completely saturated with color. I don't remember what it's from, <laughs> but it was in the bin, so I decided to use it. And then I've got some different papers that have various colors on them, blues and greens, and golds, those type of colors. And, um, they're all from different places and different projects. I don't really know where they're from at this point. Um, sometimes when you're collaging, if your paper is wrinkled or it just doesn't feel like it's going to lay down for you, you can always spritz it with a different, with a little misty bottle of water and it will kind of relax the paper fiber and let it lay down. So I did that with a couple of my pieces because they were very twisted and wrinkled and they did not look like they were going to cooperate with me. So <laughs> I spritzed them and that does not affect anything at all. It just, it reacts to in the paper fiber and lets it kind of calm down a little bit. And then when you put your matte medium on and you brush over it with the brush, it smooths everything out. So it's nice easy to do that. So once my collage was on there, I trimmed around the edges and I have a nice little multicolored bluish, greenish, goldish collage, which I like. This little stamped flower has been sitting on my desk 
Um, it's from a sheet of tissue paper that I stamped a bunch of flowers on and I thought I'm just going to use that. So I got out some fluid matte medium because that works better with napkins and tissue paper than the other. The gel matte medium that I use for most projects works better for heavier materials and uh, the tissue paper just kind of tears if you use it. So that's why I always use the fluid. That's the reason that it really requires a couple different types of matte mediums on your desk to, to be truly into collage. So I stuck everything down, went around the edges um, with a black memento ink pad because I like dark around the edges. Added a sticker from one of the Tim Holtz sets and then I decided to put some nice shimmery paint on. These are the PBO Dyna iridescent paints and I have green blue, green yellow, iridescent gold, and iridescent copper. Put a little bit of those on my palette and then I'm going to use just a little old water brush to color in my flower. So this is a stamped image, but just because it's a stamped image doesn't mean I can't make it mine. So I will be, of course, drawing over it when I'm done painting and adding some stuff to it to make it more something that I made instead of just a stamped image. So I'm going to add some gold and copper flowers, and I do end up even putting some vines and things on there to kind of balance the composition. And so I paint them in first with uh, my iridescent paints, which makes it very shimmery. And then I end up going over the top of it with my fine Posca pins and just um, making it more interesting. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to um, give it a thumbs up. That helps out my channel. Leave me a comment or a question if you have one. I always answer every comment or question within, usually within a day. Um, of course, you can always subscribe. We're getting closer and closer and closer to 10,000 in that big 10 art piece giveaway that we're gonna have, 10,000 subscribers. And um, turn on your notification bells if you really wanna know when my videos come out, which is pretty much every other day, occasionally every third day. And, uh, of course, you can put in that hashtag, hashtag ATC a day 2018 atcad 2018 to find all the artist trading cards that everyone has been making for this challenge. It's been a lot of fun. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.